I had been reading about this garden of love, which I saw in one of the Sunday newspapers, this description of this garden in France called Villandre. The garden was divided into four different sections, and each section was planted with different colours, and each section represented a different type of love. Of course, it's incredibly decadent, which I really like, the kind of excessiveness and the sense of wonder of 10,000 red roses seems like such an excessive gesture. So you have this, this initially very seductive, sensual carpet that you really kind of want to roll around in. But underneath it is this very dangerous um, layer. So I kind of like the kind of tension between something appearing to be beautiful and benign and actually being more complex. We've packed them really densely, but, not, but what, usually what happens is they dry out and they shrink, so the green comes through more, um, but then they become these perfectly dried rose heads. Um, and so often people want to make potpourri out of them, which makes me really pissed off. So to, to get away from that kind of sentimental connotation, I then collect the roses at the end and put them all in a big blender. Through the afternoon, it was really interesting watching everyone because it felt like everyone had really yeah, taken were. some kind of ownership of the work, which is what's always really lovely when people help you, is um, that they get involved in the work in a different yeah. way than when just someone just comes to look at it. Um, and so, to a certain degree, that's going to happen in a very different way with the, with the folly in the wilderness, which is a huge construction job. There's a kind of interesting um, twinning going on there. In a way, this being very feminine, all these women helping me. And then it's all blokes down um, in the mud, digging that huge hole and all this steel and um, studding. So the other piece, yeah, I'm making a contemporary kind of folly, a grotto um, made of amethyst and obsidian. So I again was taking the logic of these kind of tradition of these grand country houses and the grounds and thinking about the kind of history of landscape gardening and the notion of um, the wilderness. I'm living in California at the moment, so I've got really interested in kind of crystals and all that kind of hippie healing stuff. I like the idea of making a, a grotto or a folly, but using amethyst, which is a kind of healing stone, and obsidian, which is this black volcanic glass. Oh. 